episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about concurrent engineering and some recent design changes with the aircraft and how that all occurs and comes about. Um, this aircraft is really pushing the limits of what is technically uh, feasible uh, given the state of uh, development of flying wings and also the state of availability of various materials. Uh, anytime you design an aircraft that pushes the limits, you have to set certain goals up front, try to hit those goals, come as close as you can. But those goals that you set up front become design drivers. Um, and as you're driven by those factors that you've chosen to try to meet, uh, sometimes you get boxed in a corner, uh, don't know what to do, nobody's done it before, you have to invent it as you go along. Uh, so, as you get in this uh, inventing process, as you design and build the aircraft, uh, you have to make compromises, sometimes you have to backtrack and, and redo things, and that's where I find myself today. Uh, now, you might be wondering why uh, somebody like me who has an engineering background and a piloting background, decades of experience, wouldn't just sit down in front of a computer, uh, fire up a nice 3D modeling program and some aerodynamic software and get all the design work done up front and then just go build the thing. And unfortunately that is uh, fraught with uh, problems uh, because you can sit there on the computer and say oh, this will work and this will work and this will work and you can be fairly certain of that. Uh, you can do analysis and say this will take the loads. But as you go along some of the uh, design goals that you set up front uh, will drive the design in a direction uh, that you just couldn't contemplate ahead of time. Uh, nobody can foresee the interaction of all the factors. There are so many factors involved, uh, nobody can possibly ascertain in advance uh, how they're going to interact. So sometimes it's better to do uh, concurrent engineering, which is what I do on this design. And uh, I like to make it uh, simple for folks by saying, you know, if you make the drawings after the aircraft is built, the drawings are much more accurate. Uh, in other words, we're going to uh, eventually do drawings that are uh, drawn as built, uh, as opposed to uh, drawing it up ahead of time and then building to drawing. That gives me more flexibility with the design. I have better odds of hitting the design goals. However, it does, recall, it does uh, cause some backtracking sometimes, you throw some stuff away, you get a chance to redo. And I thought we'd talk about one of those cases today with the design. And it has to do with a very important part of the aircraft, and that is the spar carry-through that goes through the center section of the wing. It literally attaches together the two outboard panels of the wing and the center section of the wing, which contains the pilot's cage and the cockpit, uh, accoutrement, the control stick and this, that, and the other thing, flaps, uh, controls, uh, everything that you need uh, to interface with the pilot. Uh, so the spark carry through is kind of critical. And I, uh, you may have seen some previous videos where I built uh, uh, this part. This is one of the spar carry throughs. Uh, sits in the center section of the wing. There'd be two of these, one high, one low on inside the wing and to attach the outer wing panels, uh, these, uh, the outer wing panel would be this and would slide in here and then a pin drops in here, tubular pin. Uh, this was probably the sixth or seventh design of the spar carry through. Uh, some were just uh, mental designs, other ones I actually built some mock-ups and you've probably seen video on that. Uh, and I was highly confident in this. I know this will carry the loads. Uh, it's been tested in various components. Uh, and I also know a couple other things about this, you've probably seen that in the video. These components here, this top one and this bottom one, were very hard to build for me. Uh, I've been building, since I was a kid, I've been building models and full-size aircraft for decades. If these were hard for me to build, they're going to be hard for other people to build. Part of the problem was getting these load straps wrapped around the thing, all the way around and getting four layers done. And clamping them in place and holding them secure while the epoxy cured. Uh, quite a challenge. Uh, and I knew that somewhere along the line, I'd come up with some ideas and I'd end up redesigning this. I didn't think it would happen while I was in the midst of uh, building the center section of the wing. Uh, so that means that these parts here, this part, these other parts, they're ancient history. They're going away. 
And here's what actually happened. Uh, a, a very astute viewer of the YouTube videos came in and asked, he says, hey, you got these plywood cores here in your components. This has a half inch thick plywood core. Uh, these top and bottom panels have a quarter inch thick plywood core. And uh, he says, gee, when you put this big pin through them, isn't it just going to crush that plywood and tear out? And I says, oh, no, 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 no. The plywood actually is not there to carry a load. There's uh, carbon fiber doublers that you haven't seen yet because I was putting out the videos incrementally and it really wasn't clear that there's going to be these uh, carbon fiber doublers on here. It's the carbon fiber doublers that really carry uh, the uh, what are called bearing loads. Some people call it crushing, but it's, the proper term is bearing load. There, there's a series of loads that you have to take. You have to take, you have to resist a tear out uh, this way. Uh, the pin just literally tearing out of the fitting that way. You also have to uh, take the loads of this breaking across here. In other words, just snapping off that way. That would be a tension failure. Um, you also have to carry the loads of distributing uh, the loads that are in the pin out into the shear web and the spar caps. And that's a shear load that occurs along the bond line here. And uh, you do have to take the bearing loads, which is the pin loads up against uh, the surface, pushing on the surface one direction or the other. Um, the components have to be designed to take all of those loads. And I was doing that by putting in, uh, putting carbon fiber doublers on here. Now the doublers that are on here are actually about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Uh, and uh, so you have a quarter inch core, you got a six, almost a sixteenth on either side. You got something here that's about five sixteenths plus a little bit more thick. Okay. So as I was saying before my camera so rudely ran out of memory, uh, this would be the carry through between the uh, sets of fittings. And I have load straps on here that are essentially large versions of these. Uh, these are 10 millimeter by one millimeter. Uh, these are the straps that I'm using as cap strips on the main wing panels. And these are just short sections of them. Each one of these straps uh, can carry a a little north of 5,000 pounds of uh, load and tension. Uh, there's four of them bonded on to a basswood uh, core, and then I have spacers in between uh, that are one 32nd inch plywood that just happens to be the same thickness as the load straps. So I need to get each one of these end fittings lined up with the load strap and bonded on there. And we're gonna transfer the loads from this fitting into these load straps and then on over to the other side. And therein lies a bit of a challenge, a little engineering and design challenge. Uh, first of all, you'll notice that one load strap is uh, located near the edge. The other one's kind of in the middle, and this is open down here. And what this is, is I have a load strap located so that it will be up against the wing skin itself. One, one on the bottom, one on the top. And this is so I can uh, easily transfer the loads from the load straps into the wing skin. Uh, I don't want to have wood in between, uh, you know, if it were this load strap and then wood and then the wing skin, I'd be having to transfer the loads from these load straps into the wing skin via shear through the wood, which is, you can do it, but it's not the best plan. Better to bond this guy right to uh, the wing skin. Uh, so I'm going to bond this load strap to these fittings and to the wing skin. Now, how do we do that? Uh, we do that with an angle bracket. Um, because of how, uh, actually I should use the other one, as this fitting sits inside the wing, this cannot be tight to the wing skin. Uh, there needs to be a little bit of room in here uh, for the uh, tubing pin to stick up, and it has to have a pin across it so it can't drop out the bottom. Uh, I need about a quarter inch of space in here between this fitting and the wing skin to get all of the... Uh, uh, bits and pieces in here that I need to secure that uh, wing attachment uh, pin. Uh, so uh, this guy is up against the wing skin, but this guy is actually will actually be slightly below it. So we're going to be on the load strap, yet slightly below. And to uh, pick up all the loads and transfer them into the skins and side to side, I'm going to use angle brackets like this. Now you'll see that this can span across two of the load straps. We'd have one on this side, uh, one on the other side, of course. So you have uh, essentially a T-section is what you form with this. This is one layer of cloth here 
uh, that is molded on the angle stock that you see behind me. So this would go on here, there'd be one on the other side, and then these babies come on and get bonded on there. Uh, they'd actually be the quarter inch thick ones like this. I just wanted to be able to slip on the thicker one, slide in like that. This thickness slides on just like that, and then there's one down here. So these guys get bonded to the uh, angle bracket, uh, which is bonded to the uh, load strips that go side to side. And then after it's, uh, before the wing skin goes on, I'd put one layer of carbon fiber cloth across the top to transfer the loads uh, from front to rear, rear to front. So picking up the loads out of the load strips, transferring them up into the wing skins, transferring the loads fore and aft in the wing skins. Um, so the 5,000 pounds times four is about 20,000 pounds. We have to carry about 30,000 pounds. Uh, these guys will carry a little bit. They go on there. That carries some of the load. Uh, strip across stock carries some load. Wing skins carry some load. Uh, but that doesn't quite add up to the full 30,000 that I need uh, to do this job. Now, interesting part of this is the bonding area of this to the load straps is about eight square inches. 8 square inches times 2,000, 16,000 pounds. Uh, oh, it's uh, in the ballpark. Uh, excuse me, about 4 inches. It's 4 inches for one fitting. 4 times 2,000, 8,000 pounds. I really need something that's up around 10,000 pounds, uh, 12,000 pounds in order to carry all the load that goes side to side. So how do we get that? We can either make the fittings longer, they could be thicker so that there's more bond area. Um, but I'm going to use uh, the same methodology that I had over here on these. This one goes on here. There's another one on the other, on the other end like this. So we get something that looks like this. And then I'm going to take a longer version of this load strap. And this is going to wrap all the way around. This is going to go around this fitting like this, just like that. And if I can get this to stay here temporarily so I can demonstrate this for you. And then when these slide on, these load straps are going to bond here. So this load strap will go down to the other end around that one and back uh, and then overlap each other. This load strip uh, will carry uh, 1,200 pounds per side, 2,400 pounds. So it's really this load strap uh, that will keep this fitting attached to the carry through fitting. Uh, and the bond line that's along here is uh, combined with the load strap. We got more than enough. So the, uh, having to only put one of these on instead of four of them, big plus. Uh, I'll have to do that once. And we can clamp together here in the middle. So we do the taper, taper down like this. Uh, and then after it's cured, I'm going to overwrap it from, with some unidirectional. And that's because any, any time that you have uh, these load straps coming together like this, and you're going to pull on them like this under load, they're going to want to separate from the core material this way. There'll be a, a load actually generated in this direction because this is at an angle. So you have a, a load vector that runs off in this direction. It's not a lot, but it has to be dealt with. So uh, to make sure that this does not uh, separate, uh, probably the most common way for it to separate would be under compression. Um, I'm gonna overwrap it. So once we're past the end of this fitting, as you can see, these two don't quite uh, come all the way to the middle, like this. So this area here, I'll overwrap uh, that load strap with unidirectional going this way. One or two layers will be fine, won't weigh much. And that'll carry all of the loads of that trying to separate that way. Easy peasy. So uh, I could uh, mold up a bunch of these, bond them on here, then bond these guys on. Then put the load straps on. But generally speaking, when you're doing composites, uh, the number of secondary bond operations that you have, you want to try to keep those to a minimum. Uh, it would be great if we could co-cure everything. If I could lay this up, create this at the same time, glue this on at the same time, wow, that'd be great. Uh, and co-cure it all. Uh, many times in the aerospace industry, the designs are actually done so they can all be co-cured. Don't quite have that nicety here. Uh, there are going to have to be some secondary bonds. Uh, but this one may be a little extreme. This is the first bonding of the load straps to the core. This would be another bonding 
of the angle bracket here. And the, that's the second one. Then you get a third secondary bonding here. And even though you might glue these up at the same time, it's still a secondary bond because I'm gluing to a surface that's already cured. I have a cured surface here, cured surface here, cured here, cured here. That would be another bond. And then I got the load straps going on, and that's another secondary bond. Uh, and that's starting to add up in a hurry. So if there's some way that I can eliminate one of these secondary bonds, that'd be good. Um, and here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to do it. And if you stick with this video and watch it to the end, you'll actually uh, see me do this. Uh, here's the other one of the spar carry-throughs, the upper or lower one, doesn't really matter, they're both the same. It is attached to a piece of uh, plywood that here, I have it clamped on, and you'll notice I have a piece of peel ply already laid in here. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to apply uh, structural bonding adhesive to the surface here, and separately I'm going to lay up uh, the material for making the angle onto other another sheet of peel ply. So I'll put my layers on here, and then I'm going to take this, and this is going to go on here just like this, and get tucked into the corner. So now this surface here, no peel ply on it, will go right to this uh, uh, surface that is prepared with a structural bonding adhesive. This will be normal laminating resin. And this surface here will be up against the peel ply. Uh, now I have packing tape on the plywood so glue doesn't stick to it. So I'll be able to pull this part off of this molding surface. Uh, we're essentially uh, molding in place uh, with temporary molding uh, parts. And uh, this will have a peel ply finish on it so that I can bond the wing skins to it later. And in order to hold this in place, I'm just, I got some one by twos with uh, packing tape on them. And they're going to come in like this on either side. I want to do both sides at the same time. Put clamps on here. And I'm literally going to form the angle bracket at the same time that I bond it to the spar carry through. So I eliminate one of the secondary bond uh, steps. And then when this is all removed and I come back and uh, we'll have the angle bracket here like this, then I'll come in and uh, bond on this, uh, the end fittings, and then do the outside load strap. That's what I hope is going to happen. Uh, I've never used this type of process before. I've never seen it done before. I'm making it up as I go along. That's that concurrent engineering thing again. Uh, I have some very lightweight cloth here. This is two ounce cloth. Uh, I got it extra inventory laying around, so I'm going to use it up. I'm just going to put three layers of this on. That'll be equivalent to about one layer of this stuff. Um, and you stick with the video and you can watch me either succeed or fail at, at using this molding process. But at least here, when I'm done, I will have a unit here that I can pop in my oven and uh, cure it up uh, in place, uh, quick like, in about an hour. I can pop it out, and at that point I'm ready to take measurements and start cutting slots in the end fittings. Now cutting the slots in the end fittings, that's a, a story for another video, uh, because that's going to be a tad tricky also. So there we go, that's partly how the design decisions are made or discovered as I go along, how I invent processes for making these parts as I go, and some of the design logic that went into uh, the new revised design. And I uh, send my thanks out to the viewer who uh, asked a key question that got my brain thinking about how to redo this and do it better, far fewer parts, and a much stronger structure. And uh, if you have questions like that that pop up in your head, uh, they might be helpful, they might not, we don't know, but we'll see. You send them in, you might get me thinking uh, about ways to make this design better and easier for uh, people to build uh, that come after me. Or maybe people will see uh, construction methods that they can use on their own project and that would be good too. So keep sending the questions and comments in and stick with I'm going to run the video fast forward and you can watch me attempt to make these parts. Wish me luck. I'll be back in a little bit. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time Clear to see from up here, the world seems small. 
We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me We meant to be In the great outdoors Forever free essentially an I-beam spar. Um, I was really uh, surprised at how tight the layup came out. You'd swear this was vacuum bagged, uh, even though it was just clamped. Uh, the, uh, the layup is tight, uh, solid to the spar. Uh, I can still see where the, uh, the load strips are in here, so it'll be easy to align the brackets that are going to go on here. Um, so really, it came out quite nice. I'm uh, pleased with the process. Only one small area of uh, lack of perfection. Uh, right here in the middle, uh, there's a little bit of a, a dip like this. So when I clamped the board on like this, this was clamped on the ends like this, and then I clamped the one by twos, I need to put a couple of clamps to hold this in the middle also to make sure that this board sits tight with the core material along its whole length. Now this little dip here in the middle, you probably can't even see it on video. I'm sure you can't see it. It's just a few thousandths of an inch, five thousandths, ten thousandths, something like that. I'll be able to fill this with epoxy and structural filler. Uh, it's a non-issue. Uh, so it, overall it came out great. And here's the best part. So I weighed this along with its fitting compared to the previous design. Uh, this revised design uh, is actually a little heavier, but only by two ounces. Uh, so it's two ounces for this side, two ounces for the top, four ounces total, quarter pound, uh, and the design is probably three times stronger than the previous design. Uh, so um, incredibly strong uh, for its weight and 30, 40 parts fewer, so much easier to build. Uh, so it was worth uh, taking a couple of weeks and backtracking and redoing the design and now I have to move forward and build another one of these tonight and tomorrow I can begin uh, a, uh, cutting the pieces, uh, slots in the pieces to go on the end, the fittings, and get set up uh, to build them into the center section of the wing so we can get back to moving forward uh, with the uh, completion of the center section. So. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please come back and uh, watch more. Uh, I hope you're having some fun or maybe getting a little education along the way. And I appreciate you joining me for this. Bye for now.